Hey there, this is Jim with Major OSC, and I am happy to present to you the ignition demo for the ASM Hydrosynth. Um, in this video, I'm just going to go through a couple of the uh, presets. Well, actually, all of them. Uh, the demo will come with about 11 presets for you to try, uh, ranging from leads and pads to uh, sequences and uh, an arpeggiator, and um, really nice little uh, variety for you to try out if you're on the fence about uh, picking up a third-party patch uh, collection. But um, this one has, has a lot to offer, and uh, I think this demo illustrates a lot of the uh, strong points of ignition, and uh, I hope you like it. And if you're interested, head over to MajorOSC.com. So this first, um, this first patch is called uh, the True Morphin Pad, and actually it is a new patch um, that I um, added as a uh, kind of an update, a V2 of the uh, patch collection. I did minor adjustments, so um, it's got a, a very evolving um, sound to it, and it's uh, got a lot of uh, neat macros and just all over the place. You, you can turn this into like a five or six different patches, so check it out. So if you move the mod wheel up, you'll notice it's got some uh, kind of twinkle and sparkle rhythm. Which of course you have the ability to isolate on this macro. And of course the LFO cut will uh, remove all movement for the most part. We've got side chain options for those of you who are making uh, something like four on the floor or dance music. As you can see, a lot of uh, a lot of flexibility and versatility on that one, and it is a slightly newer patch. Um, actually, it is the newest patch, technically speaking, in the, the entire collection, because that would be the one uh, that's the one pad that I added to the update. So let's move on to the second one that you'll see in the thing, and that's Cloud Factory, one of my all-time favorites. Really, uh, pretty much designed for the Hydrosynth uh, and all of its capabilities. So it, um, it's got at poly aftertouch, of course. <laughs> Unveil, that macro of course is unveil, opening up the filters. I forgot how to play Blade Runner. <laughs> 
anyways, um, a lot, a lot, a lot on this one. VCO drift, of course, will uh, if you turn that down. There will be less detuning, and uh, the detuning is gradually done by LFO and LFO, uh, LFO four and LFO five. Very, very, very subtle. And as usual, it has the um, stereo width adjustment. Uh, throughout the patch collection, you'll either see stereo or you'll see width, uh, depending on what mood I was in to label it. Um, but basically what that does is pans oscillator one and two uh, to the left and to the right. And since um, the patch designs were set up in a way that made oscillator one and two fairly identical with very, very subtle you know, differences, um, it creates a beautiful stereo image that is much more useful to me in, as a producer than, than any kind of chorus effect would because, um, I don't know, the chorus effect on here is useful, but it's not to my taste for many applications. A few of them, that it works very well, but this kind of stuff I actually like more of a natural stereo feel than that. Panning oscillator one and two is just the way to go here, and I'll show you. So I panned it ever so slightly. Let's hear how it sounds dead center. It won't come that way. You'd have to go back and manually adjust it. But <clears throat> Soft is going to be uh, turning that down. It's going to remove the wave stacking, and it's going to sound a little bit more, uh, a little bit more crass and harsh. Maybe not harsh is the word. Maybe a little bit just more stringy and straight. So somebody who'd want a little bit more texture and grit might use this, especially with playing the low notes like this. Touch and use the ribbon controller for those of you with the keyboard. So, how that works. So, basically, any note that you give apply pressure to. Well, it, it will basically it will basically add in oscillator three. So so it gives you the you know flexibility of having a slide frequency or a slide oscillator, but while also being able to play um, you know your standard chords. I haven't moved notes. I haven't moved notes at all. That's the neat part is only apply pressure to one note in this chord. Now if it was not poly after touch it would sound like this. It sounds kind of cool but this gives you the flexibility of pressing just one note, adding pressure to just one note. Of course, altitude, that macro is going to be basically like uh, reverb and, uh, you know, a lot more presence. So it sounds like it's at ground level, right? And then you go up into the sky. 
more of a spacey, airy feel to it. Let's go back to default here. Pulse width gets you a bit more uh, kind of fizz. Especially with uh, aftertouch, that's basically what that means. Pulse width modulation plus aftertouch with mod wheel. is going to be uh, what basically brings all the oscillators in almost direct tune with each other. So you might want to check that function out too. All right, let's move on. This one is called Analog Heaven, and it is another favorite of mine. on this the super saw of course and you're just going to basically wave stack it now you can turn off the vibrato with aftertouch just turn this macro down now this is a neat one called pad mode stereo function so you can center it and get it more close VCO drift you can turn that down it'll straighten it out a bit stereo image back up. That's not chorus, that's just oscillator one and two getting panned. Like so. I don't let it pan to the extremes because at that point it's just two separate oscillators and there's really no interaction between the two. It doesn't sound as good. There's got to be some interaction in, in between and having that adjustability of, of uh, how much you want them, you know, it, you know, Interacting with each other really helps you uh, get a very wide stereo image and get it dialed in just how you like it in, in a production. So it'll punch out, you know, it'll stick out in a mix, but not ruin a mix. <laughs> Anyways, that's a great one. Have fun with solos and chord progressions and stuff like that. And uh, obviously there's other macro slots, but I left those open for you to decide if you'd like to add, add some of your own. But basically, you know, this is something that's going to depend heavily on ADSR for its prime character is uh, it's basically it's very much like an analog subtractive synthesizer patch so you're basically going to be adjusting you know attack decay sustain and release to get your uh most functions out of this so but yeah nonetheless very useful and very fun to play all right fat and fuzzy <clears throat> this is a very simple very simple patch but very fun to play 
uh, and some really demonstrates how well the ASM Hydrosynth does analog fatness through its filter emulations. So opening the mod wheel, or I'm sorry, oh, you know, <laughs> turning up the mod wheel, or opening, I guess you could say, um, will actually bring it, bring the filter down. You'd think it would do the opposite, but not on this. I left that for the macros. Probably turn it down a little, hey? Way loud on that one. And once again, even though it's a bass, I still added the ability to have it go super wide. And that's just a basic uh, ARP pattern that's built into that. So you could, of course, remove the ARP and, and go nuts with your own kind of you know, stuff like that. All right, next up, Valve Pipe Dream, or otherwise known as Pipe Dream. or a key. Once again, it's got that stereo macro, centered and wide. on this pretty much opening up filters and I cannot remember if I added ribbon sure enough we got ribbon function to doing a little bit of uh, a little bit of pulse width There's lots to adjust on this lots of fun to do If we go back and play it like I meant it to be played, which is basically initially it's a key. Check the tempo key to play along in rhythm with those uh, delays. Damn cat hair. This is you'll recognize this probably. Oh, <laughs> 
<laughs> so sick talk this uh this will turn this will turn up a lot of that vocal um format filter turning it down i'll, I'll do it a bit so if you want a bit more predictability i guess you keep this low you know if you're making a loop that wants that you want some consistency but if you're doing solo or you just want more, you know, unpredictability. <laughs> ATFX, you press after touch and you'll hear stuff. <laughs> And then ring model that'll bring up uh sorry, turn it down, it'll just be uh, oscillator one and two. So a little bit less grit and then saw. Turn that on. You're just gonna be here in saw wave, no uh no wavetable movement. <laughs> I believe this one has expression pedal routings, but don't mark my words on that. You'll find out, I guess, if you have an expression pedal. <laughs> yeah, I don't have mine hooked up at the moment, unfortunately. Not, none of these have a, a dependency on expression pedal. Expression pedal was kind of added as icing on the cake for maybe 30% of them. Oh, I already gave away the best little feature of that, which is the uh, tremolo. This is called Keytopia. It's for those. Uh, it's for the icing on the cake, or you know, if you're working in retro wave or doing some kind of uh, doing some kind of power ballad, or or even just a break inside of an EDM track. You know, need something a bit more emo. And then you turn up the mod wheel. Now, there's polyphonic tremolo, which is basically an, each time you trigger a note, it's doing its own movement with the LFO, right? But if you go into LFO 3, and you turn this, turn LFO 3 to off. Sorry, it might be LFO2. My bad. Turn that to off or single. Yeah, there you go. So turn that off, and then it's just standard tremolo, no matter what notes, no matter what order. Much more like traditional tremolo. Personally, I like it with, uh, you know, polyphonic or, you know, per note. That way it's just a bit more flutter and movement. Space out, it's basically just stacking the waves with a little bit more ambience. Here's it centered, that's stereo up here. Now the stereo macro will get turned up to max. And 
crystal adds a bit of a shimmer and high end. Turn it all the way up. All right, let's move on. Iceman, this is a fun, uh, this is actually another new one that I added with the V2 update of the uh, Ignition Patch collection. So if you're new to buying it, you'll actually get V2 right off the bat. But this is a very, very, uh, very fun little uh, LFO and envelope induced sequence. There is no arpeggiator. This is with it turned on. Not much happening, right? Turn off this and let the LFOs and the envelopes do their work. Oh, you can see it a little bit there. Let's see if you can see it a little better. for you. It's got this fun little effect. Another one, uh, another thing you can do that's pretty cool is, um, you know, since the LFOs are set to per note polyphonic, you can do this. them off just a little bit it's got that nice chunky kind of organic feel This is going to be uh, kind of a brassy patch used for um, kind of a jazzy horn risers, I would call them. And then it's got a really fun one. If you turn SEM amount all the way up, and that's basically switching to filter too. old Roland romplers that you'd hear that's kind of their that's how horns sort of sounded <laughs> but back to filter one does a bit more of a punchy analog sound <laughs> Of 
course, ensemble, turn that down. It's going to be sounding more like a single trumpet or a few. Turn that all the way up, and, you, and then use aftertouch. That's definitely jazzy right there. All right. And then the piano. I threw in the piano because, I don't know, it's fun. It sort of sounds like a piano, and uh, I figured everybody could make use of this. Some neat things about this is that if you press and uh, if you're pressing down a note, it will fade away just like a real piano. Up top, it'll be shorter, right? But down low, it'll be longer, just like a real piano. I have a release release adjustment right here, but I also I believe if you're using. If you're using a sustain pedal, as it uh, is supposed to, I believe it will it will function exactly as it should with this. And just before I release this, I'll just double check and make sure for those of you who have a sustain pedal. Those of you who have an expression pedal, I believe when you push the expression pedal forward, it should trigger the release to go up. Uh, you know. Okay, this last one is called Saturn, uh, the ring, <laughs> Rings of Saturn to be exact, um, and is inspired by a track from Dead Mouse called Saturn, and it's got an epic intro, and it's got this nice ad at the beginning, and then it's um, obviously these, there's multiple layers that you'll hear. Well, this one's kind of incorporating at least two of them, and that is the pad and then uh, like a pluck. So if you uh, keep the mod wheel turned down, you'll hear a pad. this up.
have some fun with here. Believe it or not, it is not stereo. add that macro simply title a macro with or stereo and then oscillator one mixer oscillator one mixer oscillator two panning left and right <whistles> this one really didn't need it nah, plus i was using uh, different functions for oscillator one and two and it of course brings out a lot more stereo once you get reverb and delay in there <laughs> So, those of you who uh, want to try something new and you're stuck at home, you know, these are free to try out. Hope you like them. Play them to your heart's content. If you want uh, more of these and uh, uh, over 150 uh, presets, head over to majorosc.com forward slash ignition, ignition and uh, go pick yourself up the uh, ignition collection for the hydrosynth. I think you will absolutely love these. And uh, that will definitely make your productions and your live performances and jam sessions that much more enjoyable. So until the next video, stay healthy, please. Um, you know, practice all that social distancing and, uh, and get to know your synth better. I'll be posting some more videos, including tutorials, and um, I think I'm actually going to do an official review of the Hydrosynth. I think it's probably about time. I've had enough time with it to really review it and pick it apart. Spoiler alert, it's fucking awesome. <laughs> See you guys later.